well, let's, let's therefore say, now that we've got an idea of what I was talking about with the medium, um, that is more important to teach. And you see, the important thing about teaching, and this is where I think is the critical thing about the interactions during teaching and learning is that the person's input, the, 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 the learner's input into what they're doing um, can't be irrelevant. It can't be just pushing buttons or saying what they're told to say or filling the niche that you hold out for them and say, okay, now say this, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe some of it is like that. You say, okay, phrase the null hypothesis like this. And they say, okay. But the point is, is that when they go ahead and do some data or something, they've really got to come back and actually see how it interplays with that. You can't give them fake data. You can't give them uh, a canned experiment, right? And when you do, they don't learn. And this is why so many basic bio, uh, science classes don't teach because they're trying to do the transit of entertainment. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're trying to do the transitive thing. They're like, okay, I'm going to get up there and students are going to go through Mendel's experiment, right? With these, with these critters or Morgan's experiment with the fruit flies. And we're just going to recapitulate that and we'll get the same results. And the students will like sort of experience being Mendel or some shit like that. And that just doesn't fucking work. The students know it. And bluntly, right. role players do too. Role players do too. No, every GM thinks that they have turned, the, they've pulled off the great stage illusion. And everybody, but everybody says, oh, thank you. That was fun at the end. And you know what? You just lost a bunch of those people who are never going to be interested in your game again. Because you fucked with them, you fucked with them. I feel like input. a lot of, I feel like a lot of GMs don't actually know that. <laughs> no, I know. Okay, I agree with you. They don't. They think they're the master illusionist. You know what I like asking those people? I like asking, "How are you doing?" If they're interested, I don't. I don't chase people. Okay, if the person's in their zone and fine, I'm not going to chase them. But if they are interested, and if we are talking about this stuff, they've come to me. Okay, they mm -hmm. have taken the step over the fifty percent line. Then I will ask them, how are you doing? And you know what they'll often tell me? They'll say, oh, fuck, I'm exhausted. I hate these people. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Be and it's exactly opposite of what you just said. It's, it's more work to do that rather than less. It's more work at the table, more taking care of people, more, you know, strategizing, you know, the next, okay, so that guy's going to tell him this next, you know, all that kind of stuff which is very different from, and this is an important point, yes, we can be talking about a mission. We can be talking about a thing where I actually lay out a map first thing on the table. We can be talking about something where I just hand you some characters. I mean, we're not talking about who makes shit up. We're talking about what happens once it's hit the table. If the outcomes honor everybody's input and their input is understood by everybody to be have certain constraints like i can't say i hit you unless the dice come up a certain way that's a constraint okay mm -hmm. um i mean so so it's the way we are talking to one another about what individually and the constraints that we all are calling the rules and those rules could as we've talked about before those rules could be in the book and we're honoring them exactly as best we can or they're not and we've tweaked the fuck out of it or we're even working off of something that looks a lot like you know my scribbled notes so these are this is actually core but it looks like this right so the so it doesn't matter but the rules are what we're doing now if that's the case it doesn't matter how much is front loaded in terms of content what matters is that nothing is front loaded in terms of the end of a conflict the end of a scene the end right. of the right so that's what we're teaching is how to honor one another's input and the embrace of the constraints. That's called inspiration. You're not going to do it unless you want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All and right. so now of course that, the system tries to 
mm -hmm. uh, tries to, let's say, it, uh, incentivize is the wrong word, but right, it is. the characters yeah. have these mm -hmm. life, these mm -hmm. characters have these life shapers and you are encouraged to use them. There are beautiful things uh, in there, yes. And then there's the fact that you're encouraged to set up a plot field, not a plot right. line. All of those are right in line, right in line with what you're talking about. There are some things, if you want to go to the system talk, I can. There are some things that I'm going to raise for your consideration that are either in there because you want them to be, and you like them, you want them in there, or they're in there as artifacts that you may associate with getting out of the way or with familiarity and think must not be that bad, but they're okay. okay. They're doing no harm. Um, and so if we want to, I would like to look at those things with you. Um, uh, do you have like bullet point list or something? Yeah, but I didn't All write right, it down. So, oh, okay. So how much do you want to jump to the other topic or you want to finish this? Topic? I want to stay with the teaching part because I'm really liking kind of the, let's stay with, yeah, that. Let's okay. stay with it, but I just, yeah. So, but, so, you know, I do have that like hovering there and maybe it would be useful for both of us to bullet point it. I'm um, very right. curious, but I know that right. that's going to be a rabbit hole of its own. Hopefully a good one. Um, so in this case, let's look at this teaching thing, because one thing that doesn't fucking work, and this is what drives theater people and science people insane, is that you think you're doing a lot of little fun, flexing, you know, skill building exercises one after the right. other. And unfortunately, they don't ever actually do the thing. So, I mean, you, theater classes are like this. They'll, they'll, they'll like, you know, become actors for months. Yeah, yeah. And all they do is become actors. They don't actually, you know, do a, a play, you know, however long or a monologue or anything. They don't actually. <laughs> I'm always choosing right? the hardest. I'm always choosing the hardest, most abstractly complex thing to do. Mm -hmm. So when I had to direct a one act play, in high school, uh, I chose Impromptu by Tad Mosell, which means that I had a bunch of actors who I'm trying to inspire to act like people who just right. wandered into this room and happened to be here and don't know what they're supposed to do. That's the last thing course, an actor the fact wants, that yeah. The, the yeah. fact that they're allowed to improvise on the stage gave me the most wooden performance. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so with this, the, there's, there's similar things too. We know that there is an actor subculture. There's a way that they are, they, they start to talk to each other and start to talk to everybody else and all the rest of it. These theater classes will produce members of that subculture. They will not produce people who are literally inspired and bring their own sense of expression to a work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so. And that, a big part of this problem is the fact that education is driven by profit or oh, seeking funding from the state, either way asterisk <laughs> asterisk paragraph at the bottom yeah. and in that paragraph at the bottom i'm sitting there waving hi todd <laughs> you know <laughs> it's, it's like right so so we we high five each other on that one and keep going um the uh the issue here with therefore is that there does have to be it's what i was saying before the doing as vygotsky says actually does have to be the doing scaffolded or not it does have to be the doing. And in the case of role-playing, that means that from the get-go, a person needs to walk into several things. They need to walk into what it means, in the case of a game like this, for a failed role. And that, so this is what I was trying to talk about before when I said I wanted to experience a failed role. It's not that I wanted you to show me your explanatory text for how it's like laid out in the rules. I actually want to experience a failed role and see that failed or not a role means there's a new now mm -hmm. right that is what i'm interested in i'm now Grappling seeing why it, you ask right? these questions i'm now seeing them from right. like a from like a different angle right yeah from yeah. sort of a, a more didactic angle and and so i'm appreciating this now but along the way i'm occasionally going to interject At least just to get just to just to point out because Later, when I review this, this is my Akashic record, right? Because uh, I think, because I'm analyzing my own approach, later, maybe this is something I teach, right? 
uh, again, there's like a two level thing going on. I've got a safety net under my high wire act. Um, and if all goes well, we play it up here. Um, but I know how to do the, I know how to hit the safety net in such a way that it still looks spectacular. That might be a good metaphor. Okay. So when it comes to things like, uh, does a fail state really create a new situation? Ideally, it does, because I like the players to surprise me. I already know what the NPCs are doing. I want to know what you're doing. Right? This is a story about you, ideally. Mm -hmm. um, but some players, you know, will grab that and they'll run with it. And I'm, I'm happy to give players much more narrative freedom than most of them take. Right, right. Uh -huh. uh, so I think it works pretty well. And then a lot of players... Maybe they feel timid. Maybe they're accustomed to different style games. Maybe they just don't know they're allowed to say something bigger. So they make it something really small, like I do one extra hit mm -hmm. damage. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't break anything. So that's like falling back to the safety net. We just let it go. Yeah, I'm not sure it's falling back to the safety net. I mean, you're talking about a dial of, of some variable that has a name. You know, in the lexicon of role playing written 100 years from now, that'll have a name. Um, and and I understand that dial, the safety it's that kind I'm of talking like, about. Ideally, I'm looking for the next the next beat, you know, whatever it is. Right. We're moving around this circle, and I know that I I, I want to inspire a sense of seeking for something, mm -hmm. needing something, being drawn to mm -hmm. something that aligns with that mm -hmm. feeling, right? Um, but I have two places I can get it from, and ideally, I get it from you. Let's... But if I can't get it from you, I can get it from the plot field and push you into it. Both of those, those are not alternatives. Those are the same things. Those are just you and somebody playing a character doing exactly the same thing with different sets of instrumentation. Remember, we talked all about the musical Well, sure, but, but, it, but, but you're the important one because I could sit here and move right, my NPCs right, right. around all by myself. Well, <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. No, we can't because therefore neither of us can do that. I can't play this kind of game by myself. There are solo games... Set those aside for the moment. We can't play this kind of game by myself, and you can't play this kind of game by yourself as GM or player. We need to have this kind of, you calling it surprise, I think it's a slightly more complex or a slightly more nuanced thing that just means things are happening that weren't under anybody's soul control. And they did require deterministic input from everybody at some point, right? And so... I mean, you and I both are conversant in chaos theory, and the fact that this conforms perfectly is right. is is fascinating. And let's not go right. there. Because okay? the, the, right. the word I really want to use here is emergence, and of course, yeah. emergence is the property of chaotic systems. Yes. That's what we're yes. About. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So, with this in question, though, that means that the input cannot be vetted. No. No. Better yet, the output cannot be vetted and massaged. So the fact that you're putting in, you know, shall we say, turning up the heat on some aspect of the plot field, or the player is turning up the heat on just how much their character is driving for at this particular moment, or trying to escape from, you know, you know what I mean, turning up the heat on the activity. Either one, those are great. They are not alternatives. They are just particular degrees of heat being done by different people at different times. For their respective right, I instruments. agree that they're not. I agree that's that not the same thing. Sense we're doing, right. I agree that we're doing the right. same thing in an abstract sense. But, but my priority is the the first one, the one that comes from you. That's great, and that's right. wonderful. Right. Personal preference. You just go right ahead. But, but I want to contrast any and all of this from the safety net. The safety net that says, "Oh, don't worry. No matter what, the character is going to get through this because it's not that important." Or no matter what, they're going to get this clue out of it because they need this clue to get to the next fight and they need the next fight so they can get to the next clue. Yeah, but that's right? not what I mean. I because know. Making it that's the, what I'm saying oh. is we are okay. not talking about this and therefore, no matter what you say, otherwise, you don't have a safety net if you don't do that. You are validating what the other people I mean, you have a safety net against, like, doing nothing, but we're not going to do nothing around here, okay? That's just not on the cards. Um, we are validating what the other people are putting in. 
if you honor what they say they do, no matter how little or how much, if they honor what you say is going on, no matter how little or how much, if we, in the case of your game, actually do honor the dice as genuine constraints and you don't fucking like say, oh, well, that's a minor failure. You know, that's a that's a little bit of a failure. That's a, that's a yes, but. And you kind of like wiggle the butt so it goes where you want, mm -hmm. right? I mean, as an outcome. I mean, in other words, if yeah, you, you, yeah, that's ass. Yeah, that's just yeah. ass. So sure, why? Right. I mean, why even? Why do that? <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, but this is very important. I do okay to go over to your pros and to your some aspects of the design. There's a little more of that, like lurking in there, right? There's like little well, lurking in there. I'm sure that you you notice every time I say subject to GM's approval. Well, there's the, like there there are some things like, like that, yes. But do bear in mind that there are things that the GM does have authority over. And that's not approval. That's his job. Right, right. Right? And there's it's a difference. genre and tone. Yeah, it's, it's their, if it's their job, then it's their job. And nobody's approving of input on the use of the proper use of the jobs. It is your job to put in that input. It is my job to put in that input. If I need to know about that, I should ask you. 